Hi, Cindy Clark from Minnesota Elder Law. And today we're going to talk about what one gentleman called a ladybug deed. One day I got a phone call from a very nice gentleman and he says, you know, I was talking with a neighbor and and he mentioned that his lawyer did this these this ladybug deed for him. And I think I want one of those. Can you give me one of those ladybug deeds? And uh I thought that was so cute. The actual name, the nickname is Ladybird Deed, but I like Ladybug better, so I'm going to start using that instead. Ladybird Deeds, um, it's a uh, nickname for an enhanced life estate deed. Um, what happened is these were kind of invented, I guess you could say, by a lawyer in Florida in the 1980s. And when he started presenting this to other lawyers to tell about um, how to use these, in his example, he for the family, he used President Lyndon B. Johnson's family as the, you know, where we'll say Mr. and Mrs. Smith or whatever, he used Lyndon Johnson's family. So of course, it was Lady Bird that would have been the survivor if Lyndon died and it became known as Ladybird Deed. So what is a ladybird or a ladybug deed? It's, it's a special kind of deed. It almost acts as if you are putting a beneficiary on your deed. That's not exactly what happens, but that's how it, uh, that's how it works. So what happened, it's called an enhanced life estate deed, as I had said before. And what it does is it permits the grantor, the person who owns the property, um, it gives him the right to live in that property for his entire life, retain control over that property for his entire life, but at his death, the property goes to what are called his remainder men. Um, we think of them as beneficiaries, but legally they are called remainder men without probate. So for some people, if their home is their only asset, this might be a perfect solution. But again, it depends. There's a lot of pros and cons to everything. Just because it works great for your neighbor doesn't mean it's going to work great for you. So. Some of the benefits of a ladybird or ladybug deed. The current property owner can sell, mortgage, or gift the property without the consent of the remainder man. Okay? He can also remove or change the remainder man. You don't, you're not happy with one of your kids? Take them off the deed. Not a big deal. It keeps your Florida homestead property exemptions and it keeps your um, creditor protections in Florida. And if you're husband and wife, you're joint owners, you can still use this. What happens is it passes to your remainder men, your beneficiaries, at the second spouse's death. So, um, I'm gonna get a little bit into taxes here, a little bit because, again, everything we do touches in estate planning, it touches so many aspects of everything else. So that's why we always say it depends because it depends on what's most important to you. What benefit outweighs the, the disadvantages? Because nothing is all advantages and no disadvantages. So um, because the current owner retains so much power, it's not considered a completed gift. In other words, if you just add your child to your deed, add them as a joint owner, or just turn the property over the, to them completely while you're alive, that's a completed gift. You have now made a gift of that property to your child. Um, and for tax purposes, that can have ramifications. So in this particular case, there are no ramifications. Um, also for Medicaid planning purposes, it can have ramifications. This particular transfer is not penalized by Medicaid, so good to know. Um, it is better because it's not a completed gift. There's no doc stamp transfer, uh, no doc stamp tax at the transfer. Remember, if you buy a house in Florida or transfer ownership of property 
in Florida, you have to pay what's called documentary stamp taxes to the state. Well, this is not a completed gift, so no doc stamp taxes. It's better than adding a child to your deed because the child will get a stepped up basis in your property at your death. What does that mean? It's very, very simple. If you, let's say you bought a, piece, a condo for $100,000 and at your death it was worth 200, okay? If you leave it, if your child gets the stepped up basis, in other words, they inherit the property at your death, your child gets it at the $200,000 value as of your death. So when they go to sell it, as long as they get about 200,000 or more, they're only gonna pay capital gains on anything over the 200, not the 100 that you paid for it. But if you give it to them during your lifetime, if you add them to the deed, if you turn the property over to them, they now inherit your cost basis. In other words, so they now own that property at a $100,000 cost basis. They go to sell it after your death, because let's say you're still living there or whatever, they go to sell it, they now will owe capital gains on everything between the 100,000 and what they sell it for. So, might not be the best bet. Again, it kind of depends on everybody's situation, their tax situation, cost basis situation, but these are good things to know. And again, as I said, this is considered an un this is not considered an uncompensated transfer for Medicaid purposes, so there's no penalty involved. But, okay, so as I said, everything has drawbacks. What are the drawbacks? Even though we just said that you as the grantor have all this power over the property, yes, it's true, under the law, it says right on your deed, I can do all these things. The law says I can do all these things. But guess what? Title companies, finance companies, they just ignore that a lot of times. And a lot of them, when you go to sell the property and you've got remainder men on your property, they're going to want every single one to sign off on the mortgage or the set. So if you don't have a good relationship with your kids, that can create problems or can't locate them, God forbid, or one of them's dead, then that can create problems. So um, it can wreck the rest of your estate plan. So let's say you've gone, you went to an estate planning attorney, you came up with a really good plan that you paid a lot of money for, um, everything's gonna work wonderfully, but then you talked with your neighbor and your neighbor told you about this wonderful thing called a ladybug deed and you went to a different lawyer and they said, sure, I'll do a ladybug deed for a couple hundred dollars and now you have a ladybug deed and you just wrecked your entire estate plan. So be very, very careful with that. Um, if your remainder man dies and you forget to update it or maybe you're incapacitated and your agent doesn't know enough to update it, didn't know you had a ladybug deed, um, that child's interest is going to go through his probate. So that's fun. If there's a mortgage on the property when they inherit, okay, a lot of you, a lot of you have mortgages on that property and you're leaving not only the home but the mortgage to your children, the gift that just keeps on giving. Um, they, if there's a mortgage and some of the remainder men don't pay on that mortgage, what happens? Whoa, that gets ugly. Um, it gets ugly real fast. So basically there'll be foreclosure and you've just pretty much destroyed your family. Um, because there's always going to be somebody with hurt feelings because they had to pay the mortgage or they got more than the other kids did and blah, blah, blah. It just gets ugly. Um, if there's a remainder man and the remainder man and their spouse divorces, that ex could end up sharing ownership of that property with her, her in-laws, his or her in-laws. Again, lots of fun there. And of course, any remainder man's creditors, after they inherit as a remainder man, could force the property into a sale. Um, it only takes one. So, um, so again, there's drawbacks to everything. So you have to kind of judge your family versus, uh, you know, what's important to you, what's important to your kids, 
this type of thing. Do you have a mortgage? Do you not have a mortgage? And see whether this is something good for you. And again, that's where an estate planning attorney can help you. We actually bring up all these bad things that can happen and go, how important is that to you? If that's not important to you, then this might be great. Basically though, for me, I generally will only recommend a ladybird deed to somebody who has no real estate plan. They might just have a will. Um, and maybe their house is really their only asset. There's no mortgage, uh, these, no debt in the family to speak of. Uh, they're a widow or a widower uh, or un just unmarried and they have one child. Okay, <laughs> very simple, very simple. Then, okay, that, oh, and they're 85 years old. So in that particular case, this might be a perfect solution. So again, um, a ladybug deed or a ladybird deed or an enhanced life estate deed, all the same thing. Um, not a one size fits all. There are pluses and minuses to this type of deed. And again, you've got to look at all the things that touch your estate plan to decide whether this is the right thing for you. And again, an estate planning attorney can help you with that. So that's all I have for today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And this is Cindy Clark at Minnesota Elder Law. And I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks. Bye.